Hi, hello, and welcome to another great video for the BD platform. You know, BD is standing for Brilliant Directories, just in case. <laughs> in this video, we will be spicing things up a bit. We will go through the how to create a widget, like in the previous videos, but we will then expand on this idea by making two or more widgets that will start talking to each other. We already offer the documentation for this in our Developer Solution Center, but nevertheless, we will include this in the video, covering all aspects related to widgets and how they can communicate with each other. So let's begin. Here we have the Developers Solution Center. You can see the URL here. We can then go to Widgets in the Developers Corner section. And here we'll see all the information currently available about widgets. But from all these uh, topics, we will only go through three of them. The first one is creating our first custom widget, which is a basic, how we can go about and creating it. We can go to Toolbox, Widget Manager, which means go to Toolbox, then clicking Widget Manager, then click on New Widget. We can see the button up here, click there, New Widget, and then we just start writing the name of the widget, which can include spaces, but I would recommend just having everything lowercase or what's called uh, camel case, upper camel case, which is something like this. We can have everything in lowercase, widget name, or you can use lower camel case, which means the first word of all the words used in the name, it's lowercase, and the second one would be uppercase here. Or you can use just upper camel case or just normal camel case, which would be something like this. In my case, I always use lower camel case, which means the first word is everything lowercase and the second one just is highlighted by the first letter being uppercase. You can also see a little image here I provided that shows all the information related to the the creating of the widget. You can see all the tabs here, the information that we'll be using there and how we can actually test uh, a custom widget like this. So here's the name of the widget, testing widget. Okay, let's put testing widget there. Let's see the content of it. Okay, inside the HTML tab, I'm just following directions here. Here's the HTML tab. Just put that there and save it. And then we can go to uh, uh, one of our pages. In this case, we're using the How It Works page. So let's go over there, Content, How It Works. Let's edit that. And scroll down here. And we can see the testing widget right here. You can put it there like this or just in case you can click here on the source code button and then scroll all the way down because that's where we want to use that widget there and just put it there. Remember the special uh, format for calling widget which is square brackets, square brackets here. Then widget, the word widget equals and then the name of the widget and then just simply close the square brackets. So let's test the new widget out, save this page, and visit the website. Let's go to how it works, and we should see this is a testing widget. See, right here? If we want, we can edit that widget, our new widget there, and you can add more information to it. This is a testing widget, which is great. Yay! something weird. Let's refresh the page here with a F5 and you can see the changes right there and then. So with that we finish with this article. It's just a simple introduction on how we can create uh, custom widgets. Now let's go to how we can make two widgets communicate with each other. 
for this case we have a widget called widget A so let's go over here create another widget new widget let's call it widget A sample A and on the HTML tab we're gonna have this information I'm just again following directions here the CSS tab and on the JavaScript tab okay there we go we just now saved and it says another widget should be made widget B okay let's call this one widget B we just copy the same code here go to CSS oh there's no CSS great then we just go to JavaScript and we save this okay and now we're in this case we're using it on the home page so remember when editing the home page if you really want to edit this page the home page you need to make sure that you go to settings design settings home page layout and on the section order make sure that you have at least in one of the sections the custom home page content there this is to make sure that when you go to the content and try to edit the home page here any changes you make here will actually show up on the home page okay that's what that option is for okay let's add the two widgets we just created we got widget A copy this put here widget B and save it we should now see the changes here see we have Alice in widget land A lol Alice in widget land B okay so if I click on eat me looking at the code here we have the code we have an HTML tag for widget A that has a spam and the spam has a widget A ID and the widget B has a spam that has a widget B ID but if we look at the JavaScript code for it we can see that if I click on the button on this button it will actually change the HTML for the widget B ID so this means that if I click here on eat me it should change this and I'm guessing vice versa if I click here drink me it should change this so let's try it out you can see that we just created two widgets that can actually interact with each other and we know that there are two different widgets because we just created them or we can just click on the magnifying glass here and we would see them show up here see the, the dotted line here same same case here okay so that's good to know there so we just created two widgets that can communicate with each other through like the title says through JS JavaScript that should give you an idea on how you can add multiple widgets and just make them each um, interact with each other through JavaScript but what happens if you want to retrieve information from the backend that's when the custom API comes comes in into the picture so let's create again two widgets in this case we're basing all this code on the widget we're, we already have on the on the, our my widget list we got uh, widget A widget B and we're just expanding 
the, the part of JavaScript for them. So in widget A, we will actually change this to that new code. Let's save that. And on widget B, we will do just the same. There we go. Up to now, we haven't actually done anything just yet. Up to now, we haven't done anything yet to the widgets. We just changed how their JavaScript will work. But we actually added an API call here. This is an, an API way of calling another widget in our backend, which would process the information that we needed and then return a, a result of it. In this case, we're calling a widget called Wonder Widget, which we haven't created yet. That's the one down here. Typically, um, when we call a widget in the backend through an API, they should be only PHP based. So this is the Wonder Widget here. Let's create that one. Let's save this one just in case. Let's new widget. Let's call it Wonder Widget. Yeah. There we go. Save it. And now let's see the code. Here we can see our Wonder Widget will receive two variables. One is a action that's going to check and the other is like a counter. Based on this, it will decide what to return. Here you can see the if statement, you can read all about it. It's simple PHP. And then it returns the answer to any of the two widgets that called upon it. Okay, so let's refresh the page here and we can see how this will work now. If I click eat me, go for three cakes, it says. I clicked on widget A only one time and we can see what happens here. We can see that when we clicked on that button, on the button from widget A, it added one uh, value, one number, number one, to the count A variable and then it sent this count A variable as the wonder count uh, variable to the PHP backend, in this case the wonder widget, and then the wonder widget got that information here, it processed that information, it knew based on the action that we were calling to eat, you can see the button here, eat me, to eat, and then based on the action counter, which is a, the counter I mentioned here, count A, count, count B, okay, based on that, if the counter was less than three, it would return go for three cakes. You can see here, go for three cakes. But if it started going up and up and up and past the three, or it was equal to three, it would jump to almost five cakes and still going and keep on going until we got to, you know, the last one. So we can test this out right now. See? If I keep on going. There we go. Okay, I can keep on clicking. This is a simple way of showing how a widget can communicate with a backend widget. I typically call them engine. A lot of people call them engines because they are in the, the backend. And the backend, the, the engine, will bring us information based on the values that we were sending. The same applies with Drink Me. You can Click there, go for two sodas, keep on going. It appears you need four sodas to be happy. And I keep on going, you're definitely thirsty. Now I keep on going and then 
crazy stuff happens in Alice in Widgetland. So, again, you have all the information, the documentation for this video here, and a lot more that you can use to understand how widgets communicate. You even have the how to use the brand directories API. You can see different ways of using the API in this case. Look at the two and you can verify which one we're using by just going to a JavaScript. Sorry here. Going to a JavaScript and checking that we're using API, data, HTML, get data widgets and here's the in this case we're using this type of API call. Okay, you got yeah, several ways of doing the calls. And again, you have several articles talking about how you can create everything here. So, hope this video was very useful to you. Uh, you just learned how to create widgets that communicate through JavaScript and how to create widgets that actually talk to the backend and based on the information they send they get a response. Okay, so this is very useful if you want to expand on the functionality or of a specific page or the whole site. So with that, have a great day and think positive.